here at the 331 Club in Northeast Minneapolis on November 1st, 2022. Beautiful evening in Minneapolis. It's the uh, Mexican Day of the Dead. And tonight is the first night of Rob and Kyle every Tuesday night at the 331 playing songs from his new record, The Rubicon is a Red River. So we're very excited to see his live performance. We'll be shooting and I'll be interviewing him inside. I'm Mitchell Anderson with MSP Excite. And look for me, look up when you see me. And I'm here to explain, explain and explore the exciting things in Minneapolis every day and every every night. Thank you. With, uh, Robin Kyle on uh, the uh, Mexican Day of the Dead. He's the uh, Dia de Mortos. And uh, this is the, the uh, first, uh, first solo album project. The Rubicon is the Red River. Would you like to tell, tell us more about the title album? Um. Well, Rubicon is the Red River. Yes. Yeah, it's a line from the newest Bob Dylan record. Rough and Rowdy Waves. Yeah. Which you uh, listen to uh, last track after you had your leg amputation? Uh, yeah, it came out a couple days after I had my first amputation. I had five operations. Yeah. So I was in hospital for a month, and it was one of the two records that I listened to the most that month got, got me through. The other was my brother's record, uh, Romanticist record, America. Um, but yeah. <laughs> well, I was quite familiar with uh, Life on Your Father's Land, as, as, as you recall. Uh, so tell us more about the, the songs on this record. Uh, what, what, uh, what are you doing with? Ah, uh, what am I getting at? <laughs> I don't know, there's lots of themes. There's, a, there's you know, it, it's a record written about uh, going, uh, lots of deaths and rebirths and, uh, yeah, good, good things that seem like they're bad things sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And turn out to be good things. So. Well, that's kind of the theme. That's the good yeah. thing. I like that. <laughs> well, it's great to be back here. Uh, with Lo you have Lonesome Dan. He'll be performing first before you come on. Um, so who's putting this album out? Is it uh, the same producers or somebody new? No, I'm putting it out. You're putting it out yourself? Yep. I produced it with Jock Waite, who engineered the record and uh, played guitar on it. Yeah. And... Um, my friend John Davis, who used to play in a band called Black Audience with me, played bass. Um, JT Bates played drums. And uh, Eric Afrokeys Anderson played a bunch of different keys, including a lot of B3 Hammond organ. And uh, some other special guests. My brother sang a lot of backing vocals, Ben, Kyle. And he'll be playing down here on the 15th with my dad and myself. We'll be doing a little round robin kind of, uh, each person will sing a song or two and then talk about it and pass, the, pass it along. Oh, yeah. So it'll be a fun night on the 15th. Yeah. Definitely, definitely come down for that, for sure. Sounds really good. Cool. So, uh, the album will be on Spotify? <laughs> yeah, it'll be on Spotify yeah. on the 22nd of November. It'll be on all the streaming platforms on the 22nd of November. Yeah. Um, I should have CDs down here next week for sale. Um, two weeks before the official release date worldwide. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. And then a vinyl eventually, apparently we're 12 months out for vinyl if you're ordering it. So I might do some sort of uh, fun vinyl fundraiser and try to get that happening. We'll see what happens. 
That's great. Yeah. If you could just put one 15 minute song on there, so that you touch the foot out of the I guess that was on Bob Dylan. Yeah, I reckon. So, uh, well, uh, tell us more about your life. What's going on right now? I've talked to you for a long time. Uh, <laughs> um, just wrapping up a busy landscaping season. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, trying to figure out what to do for winter. So if anyone is looking for someone for part-time work that pays really well, let me know. Yeah. Um, I can do all sorts of things. Right, right. Um, so... But yeah, um, I do landscaping now in the, in the spring, summer, fall. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Planning on doing a lot of music this winter too. Be playing lots of gigs and trying to do some, you know, brewery shows and just uh, playing some cover songs and doing fun stuff like that. So. Yeah, it sounds great. You know, we'll see. You're doing a great job. <laughs> it's a long, long, long way from the fox car days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, so well, that's another thing to, to talk about, the fox car days. Yeah, yeah. The record that came out, The Glamour is Contagious. Yes, that's right. It came out when, a couple years after the fox car closed, but yep. the valet is going to be playing that record in its entirety on the last night here. Um, on the 29th of November. So, with our original bass player, Jeremy, Jeremiah right. Doring, from, you know, yeah. the Magic Castles fame. He was in Magic Castles for a long time. Yeah, you know, you know Jeremy. Oh, sure, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a fun back back in time show. Yeah. 20, it's the 20th anniversary of The Glamour is Contagious. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. 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 And so, we're going to play it and play it 20 years older. That would be awesome. It'll actually probably sound better than we ever played it when we were that young. Yeah. I don't think I can get that drunk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so Probably not. No. You can try. Yeah. I think I would fail. Um, but yeah. Looking forward to it. Great. We're, looking, we're very much looking forward to the new songs, hearing them tonight for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably do a, probably do a valet song or two as well. Yeah. For fun. I might, yeah. I just learned Samantha Shepard, you know, Mentalist. Remember that song? Yeah. You'll remember it if I play it. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. I just, we just learned that at the valet rehearsal a couple days ago, so been having fun playing the old valet song. Yeah. So what, uh, you know, you, uh, what did you, what did you have to do to get the band back together again? <laughs> um, just to ask them if they wanted to play. Yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, so it's really nice for you to go off on your own and have a solo record. Yeah. You know, happy about that? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun thing to do. It was, yeah. um, I mean, ballet was supposed to go and do an EP right before I went in for my surgery yeah. and then um, we uh, COVID happened and so everybody's lives changed and things were different and we had to cancel the re recording and then I went for surgery and then we got out of surgery and I wrote a bunch more songs and I had some time and some money and so I you know hired some of my favorite musicians to come and play the songs for me yeah since the valet guys were all busy doing other things at the time and sure. so so yeah really it turned, turned into a solo record which was really fun to do yeah nice to have the you know have a different kind of sound to things again yeah. mix things up a little bit you know and you do all the recording yourself in your own studio no we recorded it at the terrarium okay jock wait engineered it and the uh, and jason oris who is the owner of the terrarium and mixed the record. So, so. Very yeah. exciting. Well, yeah. We're very much looking forward to hearing your songs tonight. Yeah. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's probably enough. Lonesome Dan will be up soon. Yes. Yeah.
I also really love John Wesley Harden. That's kind of like a real... I, I, yeah, I even bought the CD of that again a couple of years ago because I was like, I want to listen to that on CD again. Blonde on Blonde is also pretty hard to beat, you know, as far as just, like, the the sound on that record. Like, it's just, just got a, it's got something to it. And just the fact that there's so many songs that are so good. Um, I don't know. And then Freewheeling is, like, probably up there because that was my first one and it was, like, the one that really made me fall in love. That was the record that made me realize, oh, you could write songs about anything, and I'm gonna do this. Yeah. You know, that was literally the.